Many of the gaming industry's most revered franchises have been around for decades, cultivating fans over scores of releases. But Halo has just three proper installments thus far, and a couple spin-offs, yet stands as one of the most powerful brands in the space. How did Bungie do it? Was Halo always a first-person shooter? How has Master Chief already become an icon? All this and more will be uncovered in Game Trailer's Halo Retrospective. Bungie Software Products Corporation was formed in 1991 by computer game enthusiast Alex Seropian to publish Operation Desert Storm, which sold a whopping 2,500 copies. These modest sales were enough to support another project, so Alex helped fellow University of Chicago alum Jason Jones port his Apple II RPG Minotaur The Labyrinths of Crete to the Apple Macintosh in 1992. Raised on Macs, Jones helped Alex and Bungie in the relatively open and small market. Inspired by id Software's work in first-person shooters, they followed Minotaur with a Special Forces adventure game called Pathways into Darkness. Alex produced the promotional material, while Jones handled the programming and wrote the story and manual. Their next shooter, Marathon, added dual-wielded weapons and real-time multiplayer voice chat. It was the company's first official foray into the realm of science fiction. Marathon proved to have the endurance for a trilogy following the initial release in 1994 with Durandal in 95 and Infinity in 96. Each sequel was a straightforward update with experimental advancements like the ability to change allies and enemies throughout the story and a pleasant suite of multiplayer modes. Infinity also came with applications used by Bungie to modify the game's resources including levels, physics, sounds, and graphics called Anvil and Forge. Anxious to try new genres, Bungie's next trilogy focused on real-time strategy in a cross-platform venture called Myth, The Fallen Lords. It was released in 1997, the same year Bungie unleashed Marathon on the PC in a trilogy compilation. Myth removed the resource restrictions present in RTS generals like Warcraft and Command and & Conquer, focusing the experience more on tactics. The game's success allowed for Bungie West to be opened in San Jose, California. The studio began work on an anime-inspired third-person action game that would eventually be called Oni. Myth 2 Soul Blighter arrived in November of 1998. It was ported to Linux, received positive reviews, but ended up cursing Bungie in foreign markets. Asian versions of Myth 2 would wipe out a player's hard drive, a snafu that cost Bungie more than a million dollars. Approaching the turn of the century, and in the wake of a financial disaster, Bungie knew it needed a blockbuster. It drafted a whole new galaxy of lore and began another shooter project, codenamed Monkey Nuts. So we are starting to see some great games come back to the Mac, but this is one of the cruelest I've ever seen. This game is gonna ship early next year from Bungie, and this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. It's the first time they've debuted it. And we're gonna see, for the first time, Halo. After two code names, Halo was first called by its ultimate title on July 21st, 1999 at the Macworld Conference. Jason Jones was introduced by then interim CEO of Apple, the late Steve Jobs. The demo that followed featured music by Marty O'Donnell, who had composed scores for Myth and Myth 2. O'Donnell, a big fan of Marathon, had left his company Total Audio to work full-time for Bungie. Halo's an action game, so you'll be able to play it by yourself. Even better, be able to get on the internet, play it with your friends online. Our multiplayer games can be heavily, heavily focused on cooperative team play rather than playing as an individual.
everything at Macworld was rendered in real time on a Macintosh using OpenGL. The demo, representing Halo's alpha state, showed most of the vehicles available in the final game. Jobs said the shooter would ship early next year, but Bungie's future and fortune would take them in another direction. Either to cover their losses from Myth 2 or to realize their dreams of a larger-than-life multiplayer experience, Bungie was soon acquired by Microsoft. It was a unanimous decision within the company. Myth 3 and Bungie West's Oni were transferred to Take-Two Interactive, and Halo moved to a Windows and DirectX console project that had been in the works since 1998. The company also shortened its name to Bungie Studios. Halo re-emerged on Microsoft's first video game console, the Xbox, at E3 2000. It was a month before the official announcement of Bungie being purchased, yet the developer deployed a near 10-minute demo of a clearly updated game. It was an open-world third-person shooter with vast hills, barking officers, and roaming herds of creatures. Marines straight out of James Cameron's Aliens took on lizard-like monsters called the Covenant. The creatures were designed by environmental artist Paul Russell and seemingly inspired by John McTiernan's Predator. Movie references like these would appear multiple times throughout the franchise. The full trailer premiered in PC Gamer magazine three months later. The first thing to change after Bungie's acquisition went public was the game's perspective to first person. Originally intended to include online multiplayer, the 2002 launch date for Xbox Live kept that from happening. Of the 14 games on display at GameStock in 2001, Halo was unquestionably the most anticipated, showcasing a flyby of the island map style and cartographer. Halo returned to E3 in 2001, where it was announced as an Xbox launch game for November of that year. Halo was given the surname Combat Evolved before release by the marketing division at Microsoft over fears that Halo alone was not descriptive enough to be competitive in the genre. Both single and multiplayer modes put the player in command of a Spartan II, an elite, biologically engineered soldier able to wield both Marine and Covenant weaponry. Players created profiles to change their name and color in competitive modes, but the campaign storyline followed a very specific green-plated Spartan, Master Chief. Those Marines could use some help, Chief. Do what you do best. Single-player covered 10 missions, beginning and ending on the space cruiser Pillar of Autumn. The titular ring world crumbled after the Autumn was sacrificed in a nuclear explosion. The Chief was guided through each confrontational waypoint by the savvy and sentient Cortana, a projected AI construct that hitched a ride in the Spartan's helmet. The Covenant found something. Buried in this ring, something horrible, and now they're afraid. Halo obliterated sales records at the time. It sold one million copies in five months, selling one-to-one -one with 50% of all Xbox purchases. To date, it sold somewhere over five million, and at the time, it made LAN parties something cool to attend. Some people were able to sneak online through nefarious means, but most had to wait until it was released for the PC in September of 2003. The port was handled by Gearbox Software, the studio responsible for the Half-Life expansions, bringing Gordon Freeman to the PS2, and eventually birthing Brothers in Arms. Co-op was removed, but maps, weapons, and modes were added as a consolation. Staying true to its legacy, Bungie made sure Halo made it to max three months later. <laughs> 
Halo sales were no match for Halo's community, which continued playing the game non-stop after release. A custom edition in 2004 brought an editing kit to the masses, similar to Bungie's earlier Marathon mod builder, and a new PC community exploded. Halo's success was felt across the entire industry, and the anticipation for a sequel announcement didn't take long to build. Halo was not originally designed as a trilogy, but the first chapter finished with a cliffhanger that could easily blossom into a three-part chronicle of Master Chief vs. the Universe. Before Halo made a slipspace jump to the PC, Halo 2 was debuted at E3 in 02. It would be playable at E3 in 2003. So we're going to show you Halo 2 today. Uh, this is a... I'm actually going to be playing it as best I can. Um, but before we start, I just need to go over some safety regulations in case of uh, fire or electrical storm or earthquake or something like that. Just be sure that you guys are safe. Smell it, son! These folks didn't wait in line to hear your lips flippity flap. Knuckle up and get ready to dance, you pasty bastard! Yes, sir, Sergeant! <laughs> what you good people are about to see is an operation in progress. This is a real time feed. No smoke and mirrors pre recorded bullshit. During the 10-minute E303 demo, the Chief dual-wielded machine guns, manned a turret on an AI-driven warthog, hijacked a Covenant ghost, and took out a Phantom Assault ship. Minds were collectively blown. The experience seemed primed to overtake the original, but once the party was over, Bungie realized it just had a demo and not a piece of the final product. The bar it set with the 2002 announcement trailer was proving to be unrealistic, and something had to give. Bungie had an 18-month window to finish the game. At that point, it would face a hard deadline set by Microsoft for July 2004. A playable version of the game didn't surface for about a year after that E3 demo. To keep the hype going, a viral alternate reality game called I Love Bees was deployed in August of 2004. Three million people participated in the unique publicity stunt, and the event won both a Game Developer's Choice Award and a game-related Webby. The best advertising in the world can't sell a game that doesn't exist, and the artists began referring to the release as a white light at the end of a tunnel barreling down on them. The sequel represented a lot of aspirations the first game didn't have time to achieve, but also led to a good deal of wishful thinking that had to be pared back before going gold. Halo 2 was deployed on November 9, 2004. Halo 2 saw the original's 10 playable levels and raised it to 14. It introduced dozens of characters from both sides of the conflict, fleshing out the cast with voice actors like Keith David, Orlando Jones, David Cross, Michelle Rodriguez, and Ron Perlman. It extended past the reach of Master Chief by allowing players to occasionally take control of the Arbiter, a Covenant castaway punished for his failure to stop the destruction of the first game's sacred ring. The sequel embraced Xbox Live online multiplayer, and on top of providing new maps, weapons, and modes, it gave some arenas from Halo 1 an updated look. Check your targets, watch the crossfire. Halo 2 is the best-selling game for the Xbox, with over 6 million copies sold in the US, reaching over 500 million multiplayer games finished, and over 710 million hours logged in the first two years. A platinum-colored collector's edition was sold in addition to the standard box, boasting documentary footage and more packed-in backstory from the Covenant side of the struggle. The reviews for Halo 2 were mostly favorable, with much of the praise coming from those addicted to the meaty multiplayer. The extent of the criticisms came from performance hiccups when loading some of the cinemas and the general abruptness of the story's finale. Master Chief, do you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Oh, 
hoping to boost its new operating system, Vista, Microsoft ported Halo 2 to the PC exclusively for the OS. Halo 2 for Windows belatedly arrived in May of 2007. The wait was satiated by added live functionality, a map editor, and improved performance depending on the rig. The graphics bump was a moot point for some, as before Halo 2 shipped for the PC, Microsoft announced Halo 3. Game over. In our next index of Halo history, the trilogy ends on the Xbox 360 and shows a whole new generation that finishing the fight was just the beginning.